Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and I just wanted to take a quick moment to give you some ideas on using some of the latest features inside of Photoshop to create deeply textured images. So that's what you're seeing here, sort of the finished result. I've used a couple of photos here to build out this image, uh, an HDR that I processed, and then a texture of a wall that I've laid in as both a frame and a top texture on top. You'll notice here that it's actually putting a little bit of subtle overlays into the image itself, and I like that. It's just adding to the overall detail. It makes it look like this has been a poster sort of applied onto a wall or a frame. All right, let's take this from the top and I'll show you how I built it. First off, I'm going to choose File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro, and this feature was unveiled with Photoshop CS5. What you'll want to do is go ahead and grab your images. In this case, I have five images that were shot on a DSLR, and I'll click OK, and I use bracketing. Now, it's up to you if your camera supports bracketing. You ideally should use a tripod so this is perfectly stable. But in this case, I was just running around for the day, and that wasn't an option. Once those images are loaded and aligned, you'll see them in the HDR Pro dialog. Now, in this particular case, you'll see that I did some exposure compensation, which offset the images and created this master image. I'm going to start here using the photorealistic preset as a starting point, and that looks pretty good. Just a subtle change, and let's play with the overall gamma and exposure. Now, as we drag here, we're going to want to find the right balance and it's difficult because of the ocean there and some of the bright highlights. I'm going to really start to bring the color and the saturation up though so we get a nice rich image. And you see here the blue ocean, the nice rocky texture, and some of the mud mixing in with the ocean water. I'm going to really crank up the detail there and you'll start to see that come out. Now it's a little too high so we'll find a good balance there. That's looking pretty good. I like that. And let's just take a look at the overall exposure, back that off a bit. Looks pretty good. And I'll choose the remove ghost options for a second because we had moving waves. That smooths that out nicely and gets rid of some of those soft details. And I'll click OK. Now this will go ahead and create the HDR file. In this case, I've set it to a 16-bit mode and that's just fine. It's going to process that out and save it as a single document. You see the difference there between the original photo and the new HDR? That's looking pretty good. I want to go ahead and build this up with a few different layers now. I usually start with a black and white adjustment layer, and I'll click Auto to get a nice strong contrast. You can always use the On Image tool there to play with the different areas separately to get a specific contrast. Let's play with that. That looks pretty good. And then I'll select the Move tool and use the keyboard shortcut of Shift Plus to step through my blending mode. And notice that that black and white layer being adjusted gives you a whole new look to that image. I like that in overlay mode. Let's toggle that off and on. That's definitely bringing out some of the details in the water. It's looking really good there. I like seeing that texture. Let's go ahead and select all. And I'm going to choose Copy Merged and Paste a Copy on top. And in this case, I'm just going to blur that a little bit. That's a nice healthy value and I'll set that to a mode like soft light or overlay. Notice that that's just popping the colors and really bringing out the richness in the rocks, which looks great. I should be accurate and name that. And let's continue. I'm going to apply a lookup table, and there's lots of different LUTs here to choose from. Let's take a look at film stock. That's often nice. I really like how that brings out some of the texture. And this is just a lookup table, which is new to CS6, and it essentially pushes the colors absolutely. And what I mean by that is that it is sort of universal. It says that this particular shade equals this shade. So it allows for universal looks that could be applied to the image. I really like this film stock one. I think it does a nice job. All right, let's start to finish this out. I'm going to toss a photo filter in there. And you see we have warming filters or cooling filters. I like how that's just bringing out the rock tone a little bit and toning down the blue. I wanted a rich blue up there, but I didn't want it to feel so artificial. So I think that looks pretty good there. It's a little bit more distressed, and I like the dark purples and turquoises mixing with the reds of the rock. And to finish this out, I'm going to add a new vibrance adjustment layer. But I'm going to choose Select Color Range so I can isolate it. Now, since that's selected with the mask, if I just click, you see that it starts to make an accurate selection. So I can click in a few places, hold down the Option or Alt key if I want to remove something, and that allows good isolation there. 
That looks pretty good. I've got the water selected and we'll just play with the overall vibrance and saturation of the water. Let's adjust that a little bit. That looks really good. All right, I'm going to apply a blur to this. Let's just do select all and we'll choose copy, merge and paste. And I'm going to put a copy on top and take advantage of the new tilt shift blur inside of Photoshop. I'll adjust the angle of that blur and set the transition zone. The area between these two dots is what's in focus. And I can crank that up a bit and then adjust the transition zone to set a threshold between where the blur begins and ends. That looks good. I'll put a little bit of distortion in there and play a bit with the bokeh. And I could toggle that off and on to see the before and after. That's good. It's creating a little bit of a sense of perspective. Let's just adjust the angle so it better matches the actual contents of the scene. That seems to be more in line with the rock. And I'll click OK. And I'll finish that off with just a little bit of a vignette to draw the viewer's eye towards the middle of the image. Let's just click here and add the gradient. And we'll do a black to transparent gradient. And we can adjust its size. And that's good. All right, to put this into a texture, here's just a photo of a brick wall I took. Let me show you what it looked like originally. We'll just reset that. And you see it had a little bit of color, so I pulled that down, took the clarity way up, and then played with the blacks and the overall contrast to get a nice textured image. That looks good. That's pretty much what I had there. And let's just copy that to the clipboard, make a new document, and paste. Come back over to our HDR, select everything, and again, we'll just copy that to the new document. Copy merged. And paste it in. And with a little bit of free transform, I could scale that so the background texture behaves like a frame. If I put a slight drop shadow on that, I'll use an inner shadow actually so it comes inward. You see that it starts to look like it's an actual frame and that the thing is sitting on top. That looks good. Let's just adjust the size. And I like that. To finish it out, I put a copy of the texture at the very top change its blending mode until I find something that mixes nicely. Something gentle there, overlays nice, and then back down the opacity so it just mixes in. So there you have it. I'll go through now and just clean up the rest by saving my original source files and this layered image, but this is ready to share and it really brings out the color and texture in the overall photo.